Hi, I'm Janet Ingle, the Five Minute Read Maker. I had a request this week to talk about cane selection um, and cane preparation, my selection process, my gouging process. In other words, how do I get from a tube of cane in a Ziploc bag to a piece of gouge-shaped and folded cane that's ready to wind? Um, now, compared to a lot of read makers, I have to admit I'm not very fussy about cane selection, but the elements that are important to me are very important to me. These are the cane's diameter and its straightness, and of course the gouge. What's not important to me? The color, the look, the gloss on the outside, the brand, the country of origin. Pretty much anything I think will make a read. Um, so, to begin with diameter, I start with tube cane, like this, and you'll see tube cane sold in a range of diameters. For oboe reeds, it's most commonly sold either as 10 to 10.5 millimeters or as 10.5 to 11 millimeters. If you picture the circle at the top of a tube of cane, like this, you can easily imagine that the smaller that diameter is, the tighter the arc that the edge of the circle makes. Thus, when you split it into thirds, um, the smaller diameter is going to give you a more uh, give each arc a tighter curve. Smaller diameter translates then to a more open reed, as the bark of the cane is always trying to pull it back toward round, and the larger diameter uh, with a gentler arc will give you a slightly smaller opening. In my own reed making, I generally use the larger, the 10.5 to 11 millimeter cane, because I want my tip openings to be smaller and more manageable. I prefer to open and relax my mouth as I play and let the reed hold its own pitch up versus having to bite a great big open reed into submission. But your results may vary. Everyone plays differently. Of course, a given piece of cane might not be perfectly symmetrically round, and so people who are very particular about their diameters will want to measure the cane after splitting, and not just before. You can use a tool like this, a radius gauge, um, and sort your cane right as you split it. A uh, recommendation I've heard is this. Use the piece that has the exact diameter you want first, um, but if it's good cane and you like the read that you get, save the rest because um, it'll make you happy later to just have it. You might wish to change diameters as the season pr progresses too. You go rounder in the summer and flatter, excuse me, rounder in the winter and flatter in the summer to account for those changes in humidity. I gotta admit though, that myself, I am not very fussy about this. I like what I like, but if I have a bag of cane that someone else has sorted at 10.5 to 11, I don't do any more checking. It's partly that I'm very high volume. I figure almost every piece of cane will make a read for someone. But if I begin to get a large run of reads with two flat uh, openings or two round openings, then I will start to measure. I'll compensate by choosing the diameter I need to solve my problem. Straightness actually is really important. Sometimes you'll get a piece of cane that's super twisty, or sometimes you'll get one which like smiles as you set it down on the table. Um, and in that case, of course, I really just want to make sure that I'm, I'm guillotining the straightest possible part of it. This is a really twisty one, but I'm gonna go with this area of it over here. Looks a little less warped than everything else. Um, I'm not one to just throw away a piece of cane. Um, if it will make it through my process, if I can get it guillotined, if I can get it pre-gouged, and if I can get it through my gouger without those machines destroying it, I'll make a read on it. Doesn't take me any time to uh, just pre-gouge and gouge it. Um, if it looks even okay, I'll tie it on. I don't mail any cane that looks warped or twisted because that's, of course, inherently unreliable. And I don't mail reeds that don't work. But I kind of believe that every piece of cane has potential and any piece of cane can make a reed. So I'll let my machines do the selecting for me. I really like my pre-gouger that you can see here. Um, it's made by Jonathan Parks and I can use it to take a cane that's just been guillotined, cut down to length, and send it all the way down to almost as thin as gouged cane, so that I only have to take one little swipe with my inletti to finish the process. This piece of cane that I just came out with is about like 80, 82 uh, hundredths of a millimeter. Um, so one swipe on the inletti will, salt, will finish that. I'm all about efficiency in my machines. I use an Inaletti gouger, and I really like it. It's very, very reliable. The reeds come together easily, and the process is fast because I pre-gouge first, almost all the way down to my finished thickness. So I do gouge my cane a little bit thinner than some other people do. I like to aim for about uh, 58 hundredths of a millimeter uh, in the center. 
Whereas a lot of people will gouge at 60. But about 58 hundredths is my goal. Um, I figure the less cane I have to scrape off, the easier. And the more I'm working with that nice, tight, hard cane that's right near the bark, um, the happier I am. Because I'm not an obsessive measurer, I do sometimes get myself into a rut of uh, gouging too thin. I tend to uh, send the cane through the gouge and just test it by bending it back and forth. And if it feels pretty good, I go with it. Um, but once, as my cane starts to evolve and become too thin, I have to swing back to the other side. So although I don't measure every piece of cane, I do spot check with my micrometer. When the cane gets too thin, that stability of the reeds goes south really, really fast. I hope that this has been helpful. This has been a five minute reed maker lesson. You can follow these short videos right here on YouTube. Um, and you can subscribe here if you wish. If you have questions, if you have concerns, if you totally disagree with what I've said, you can find me at JanetIngle.com. And in fact, I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what I can help you with next, what my next short video should address, whether you have any questions about what I've been talking about. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.